Hi everyone, Chris here, and I'm back as you can see with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. So I bought this tablet, I ended up selling my iPad Pro, which I really do like. I do like the Apple tablets, I think they are fantastic, and I like LumaFusion for editing videos. However, I just found it too painful transferring the files from my Sony A6400 onto the iPad Pro was just so slow. I had to use the media mode, transfer mode. I tried to use a uh, micro SD card to, for example, type C adapters, plug it in, use the new uh, file explorer to transfer the files over and get them into LumaFusion to edit them, to import them. And it's just a hassle. It's a huge workaround. It's too slow for me. And that's the main reason why I ended up selling the iPad Pro. But that is a real fantastic tablet. It's a very expensive tablet as well. So is this. So I'm editing now 4K video from my Sony camera on this particular tablet. And I'll go through quickly the video editors that you can use if you do use other cameras that don't have Sony's XAVC codec, which is a bit of a problem as you'll see when it comes to audio. And a quick look at export times as well and the editor that I will be using, for example, for events, just for some very basic cuts and edit and put together a video and export it as quick as possible. So to keep things simple, I record on a micro SD card with my Sony A6400 and then simply place that micro SD card in the reader inside the tablet and that gives us our maximum transfer speeds from that SD card to the internal storage. But you can edit the files straight from the micro SD card as long as you use a fast one. I don't think we're going to have too much of an issue. So this one here is a quite a fast card. It's a 128 gigabyte Samsung Pro Plus card. Now a lot of people have been asking why am I using Kind Master? So this is actually PowerDirector right now I'm showing you which I would normally edit on with Android. The problem is my Sony, the A6400 files which are XAVC codec which is Sony's own codec there and their audio codec it doesn't like. For example if I was to just um, add this file for example here into the timeline with PowerDirector even though it is pretty quick scrubbing ahead when I go to hit play <laughs> you can hear that scratchy, horrible noise and it just will not play the codec. So at the time of this video, unfortunately, PowerDirector doesn't support the audio files. And if I was to stick it out of here too, and just quickly show you, for example, Rush for Samsung is another one that I would probably use. So this is Adobe's video editor and the same problem. So if I add a file that is a 4K one here, uh, you're gonna get the same thing. It won't make that scratchy noise, but it just doesn't support the audio and you get zero playback. So what I do is I use that Kind Master that does actually support it. There's also UCut as well, which is another video editor that does support the Sony XA VC files. But here's Kind Master. Now I have one edit that I've already got that I've just, just to save time in this video, of course. So I'll jump into editing this. Now I do have the paid version. It's rather expensive. I think it's 39 euros for one whole year or six euros a month. And I just decided to uh, buy it because I'm going to be using it. So my plan is if I go to an event, I want to edit on this tablet and it is pretty quick. But this video editor is definitely lacking a lot of features. You can see here scrubbing ahead and going through the timeline that look at how quick this is. This is the fastest performance that I've seen with a video editor uh, on Android at least. This is even faster than Premiere Pro. So I've got to give them credit where due for that, that it is really quite good. And I'll just hit play here. Really help increase your productivity. Now this screen here does so you can see that it will play those files just fine and the audio is the main thing it's coming through now i've added here you can see my own logo to the top of my videos because a lot of people keep re-uploading my videos and that's my reason behind that so you add your different files and i found that editing with this one is a little bit of a pain i mean it's not that great so you click on the file here and depending where you are in the timeline for example if i wanted to cut about there make a cut then you need to tap the cut here and you can trim actually the video clip to the left or to the right and that's the way I do it because I just do basic edit edits here especially when I'm at an event for example if I'm recording a new Samsung Galaxy S11 Mobile World Congress 2020 next year then I will be doing very simple edits just to stitch all my files together and probably include my little intro clip at the start there and put my logo on it again for those purposes of people stealing my videos so I do have a one minute clip here I want to show you just to have how quick it is to encode video on this this is 4k and you've got a few good options here with the bit rate as well with kind master but the video editor itself i mean it compare this to for example luma fusion it is lacking in options 
massively, okay, because we really don't have a lot of things we can do here. So this is just a basic edit, and what I've done is I've got exactly one minute of footage right here, uh, and I'll just go now to export this one. So I've actually got to get out of that screen here, go back to it, and hit the share. Okay, so this is going to encode it. So this is what the settings we've got. So we've got 4K, that's 2160p of course, 30 frames per second, you've got different options there. I'm not too sure if I was to record in say 4K 60, which my camera doesn't support, if it would actually allow us to encode in 60 frames per second. I need to test that one out, but I don't have 4K 60 with this camera, but I do with my mobile phones, for example. Now the bitrate, this is where it's really quite good. You can select the bitrate you want here with Adobe Rush, you can't. PowerDirector, you can. Um, but if you're using Canon or Panasonic or other cameras, then you'll be able to use PowerDirector. So the bitrate can go all the way up to, there we go, 120 megabits per second. Now I often shoot at 100 megabits per second with my Sony in 4K, but just to make things a little bit quicker, especially for the upload the file size, I'm gonna limit it to 60 megabits per second, you can see right here with the bitrate. Uh, it's telling me it's gonna be about 452 megabytes. So hit exports, so this is all on the internal storage, okay, I moved those files over before. So there we go. I should be timing this, and I will with my phone because this is gonna be, it's roughly 42 seconds, okay, is how long it will take for this to encode, but I'll get my stopwatch going, and it should come out to about 40, 43 seconds. So you can see right here, I just got my mobile phone. It's just to give you an idea, but last time I timed it and it was 43 seconds for one minute of 4K footage that's a 100 megabit per second file encoded to 60. And that is including lots of edits as well. It will still keep that same speed. So it is a quick, fast, very fast actually, I think, uh, video editor. This one, the Kind Master, it's just it's lacking civilian options for those that want fancy transitions and things like that. You don't really get it with this particular editor. Okay, so there you go. I was a little slow, of course, to put this on. That was probably about 45 seconds then, but overall, I mean, that is very, very quick. That is actually faster than the iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch, 256 gigabyte model that I used to own before I actually sold it to get this one here. I'll just go back into editing, and there's one more thing I wanted to show you that what you can actually do with this editor because I probably haven't really covered that much. So go back to editing. So there are a few options that when you trim things, what I don't like particularly with the timeline, if you edit videos, uh, like I do at least, that I like to look at the audio wave length there. You can see when your audio starts and stops and that really helps with trimming, but there doesn't seem to be an option for that. Even when you expand this, so you can insert up to two 4K clips and I think you can even insert up to four, but they'll be 1080p. So you can put various different video clips on top of each other, overlaying them in the edit as well here. And there's very minor things you can adjust here. I'll just go through that. So you do have uh, a few things here. You can change the, the speed. We've got crop color filters adjustment, but this is very what I would call rapid editing. I wouldn't use their own presets here, but if you wanted to do that, for example, if you want to just to make it a little bit warmer, you can apply their own filters there, but you've got adjustments here as well that you can go through just for brightness and contrast. So if you found that, okay, I want this to come out a little bit brighter, then you are able to do that, at least with this. You can see I've just tweaked the brightness plus 30, but the quality might not be that great. I mean, I normally edit with Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro. That's my main video editor on my desktop, but for mobile use, I'm finding that this one um, it seems to do the job. It's just I find a little bit of annoyance with trimming and cutting files. So this is a six minute clip here and you can see that it's very, very quick. And I've actually added a lot of files too before up to, what was it? I think it was about 15 minutes one of the clips. And it was fine. It encoded that 15 minutes in approximately, what was it, 11 minutes or so, which is really, really fast. Very good considering this is mobile. This is actually faster than my desktop PC at this kind of basic encodes. So unless I change my mind, I do kind of swap back and forth on what I'll be doing at events. I think this is gonna be the easiest option for me. And as I mentioned at the start, I sold my iPad Pro because it was just too difficult. You can do it, I know, but it's a little just too difficult and too slow to get the files off my SD card on the uh, Sony A6400 that I'm using and onto the iPad Pro. There's just so much workarounds to import them. I know with the beta, the iPad OS, it has improved the file explorer, but for me, this is just a, so much easier and it actually works out to be a lot quicker and faster, the export times. So as you saw, for basic editing, it's okay, but if you want to grade video properly, then Kind Master is a real pain 
it's not good for that at all. You've got basic, very basic, just contrast brightness, uh, tweaks there that you can do, and that is really it, just boosting up the exposure uh, to increase the brightness there, which is, isn't really good, but you can do that at least in post if it happened to be a bit too dark, your footage. Now, I found the export quality is actually very good. So when I compare that to, say, footage from Adobe Premiere Pro that I use on my desktop, side by side, I can't really tell the difference in just terms of the this, this standard export quality that I can do the 4K 60 megabits per second or 4K 100 megabits per second, which take a bit longer. But very, very fast export speeds. I have timed it properly. I know in this video that it was an exact time that I gave you. But you're looking at approximately one minute of 100 megabit per second footage to encode to one minute of 60 megabits per second 4K. There is going to be about 45 seconds, okay? 43. That is faster than my desktop, which has, which I've got an 8700K overclocked to 5 gigahertz. Faster than that. Uh, it's also faster than my iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch model that I was using. Faster than the Snapdragon 855. Uh, using Power Director with my Sony, sorry, Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus that I was using originally for some events with an external monitor using Samsung DeX. And it works out faster than even 10th gen or 9th gen gaming laptops or laptops that I've been reviewing and looking at. So that's why for me this is ideal. Screen's a little bit small, but for these basic cuts, that's really what it is. I'll have at max at an event, I'll probably have I would say maybe four or five different 4K files. I will then cut them, get rid of any errors or breaks that are too long, cut it, put it all together, put my intro, put my logo in the video, export, and I can do that very quickly and effortlessly really on this tablet. And because it's got 4G support, I can even upload with my SIM card just straight away up to YouTube and get out the footage of say, hands-on with the Samsung Galaxy S11 at say Mobile World Conference 2020, which I will be going to. So thanks so much for watching this video editing on the Tab S6. I know PowerDirector is a lot better than KineMaster, and you've got Rush from Adobe as well. So use those if you don't have a Sony, because the Sony files force me to use KineMaster, but good thing I do at least have that option. So I hope to see you back in the channel. Do check out the review, of course, of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 that I have. It's 20 minutes long, but I do cover the stylus, gaming, performance, GPS, so many things apart from that 4K video editing.